um good morning guys and welcome to this video um if you've made it this far i'm really glad that you have um in this video we're really going to talk about what classes and objects i remember that i said our next video is going to be on web development but it's really important that we understand what classes and objects are before we proceed right so um i have a picture on my screen of a game and why do i have a game here I feel like the best context to explain what objects are uh, via video games. So video games, video game programmers literally think objects and classes. And let's look at this video here. This is PUBG Mobile. It's a very popular game now. This is probably not a very good um, example. But let's imagine for a second that the two people on screen here are holding guns. Right? So this guy is holding a gun and this guy is holding a gun. Now, the way games work is when you shoot a person, um, in a lot of games, the person doesn't die instantly. Uh, the person has a lifeline that reduces with each bullet he takes. Now, how does that work in a game exactly? How do you implement that? I'll tell you how for free. So, here, this is an object. So, this is a person object inside of our game. Our game recognizing this recognizes the character on the left as a person object and the character on the right as a person object too. So, we have two objects. So, what are objects? Objects are those things that can interact in our program, right? Or that can interact with our environment. It's just like in the real world. In, in, in the real world today, I can interact with you, I can talk to you, I have actions, I have feelings, I have emotions, and then I have attributes, I have a, I have black eyes, I have um, long limbs and all of that. So I'm an object with all these attributes. The same thing in a game. This is an object. This person on the left is an object and the person on the right is an object. Now, the gun that they hold is an object too. The bullet coming out of that gun is an object. How do we know when someone has been shot in a video game? Every object has an X and Y coordinate in a game. Right? It's the same way wherever I am in the world. I have um, my latitude, my longitude, and probably my altitude to describe which point I'm standing at at that point. So the same in the same way, in a game, every object has an X and Y position. Now, how do I know someone has been shot? I know someone has been shot because I am constantly checking if a bullet is in the same X, Y position as that object at any point in time. So if I detect that a bullet position has changed from probably a gun's XY coordinate to the same XY coordinate being occupied by a person object, I know that this person has come in contact with a bullet and then I go to the person's life and I remove probably um, one bar or two bars now it's i'm going to bring it this is probably not the best example i'm going to bring it um to the real life right so if someone takes a machete to my hand what happens in the real life is because that machete has um come to the space that my hand used to be at i lose an arm it's um should i say it's basic physics but that's the way it happens in games too so what we really have in games are objects interacting with each other right and that's the simple thing about objects when we say classes and objects that is what objects are objects are really just things that interact with each other and we build up objects to help us abstract certain kind of thinking so we have different types of objects we have a gun object in our game we have a person object we have an environment object for example this place they're fighting in now it looks kind of like a stadium so this is an environment object you might have another environment object object which can be a garage so if you decide that you want to fight in a garage you're going to be put in a garage environment which is an object too and that's really what um, objects are they simply allow us to build up our programs with different kinds of objects now um that is one example that i like to use i'm going to proceed to the next example what are classes then if objects are things we use in our code what are classes 
And to explain what classes are, I'm going to like to start from talking about baking, right? Okay, so we need to bake um, a cake or something for a wedding. And apart from the dough, um, that, so we have to mix our dough really. So that's flour, eggs, um, milk, butter, or uh, margarine instead. So we need to make a cake. So we made our dough. What happens next? What happens next is we put our cake in a pan. We put our dough in a pan, put it in an oven, and out comes a cake. So let's look for baking pan. And I'll just go to the images. And I'll, I'll pick this one. So let's see I buy this baking pan. Uh oh. Okay, let's say I, let's say I buy this baking pan. I right? I have just this baking pan, and I want to make five cakes. What am I going to do? I'm going to make enough dough to make five cakes, and then I'm going to put my dough in this baking pan. I'm going to make a cake out of it, and when the first one is ready, I'm going to take the same um what's it called? I'm going to take the same pan, put more dough in it, make another cake how many cakes do i have now i have two big cakes what do i do next i remember i need five cakes i'm going to take some more dough i'm going to put it in this baking pan and out comes another cake that's three cakes i'm going to do this two more times that's five cakes now what i want you to understand here is that out of this one pan i have made five cakes now these five cakes are independent of each other as long as we're consigned. They're not related to each other in any way. If I cut one cake, it doesn't mean another, the other cakes are going to get cut or they're going to feel cut. It doesn't mean I have to send these cakes to the same person. These cakes can have very different lives. One of them can be consumed today, another one would stay in the fridge. For But the fundamental thing to understand here is that they all came from the same baking pan. Now think of those cakes as objects and think of this baking pan as a class. So then what is a class? A class defines how an object is going to be when that object is created. So a class is called an object definition. It tells you what and what an object is going to be like when that object is created. And then an object is created from a class. So now we have our one baking pan, which is a class that specifies the shape a cake is going to come out in. And then with that one baking pan, we can make several cakes. Before we even go into code, I want you to understand that basic, right? That the pan is your class and your cakes are your objects. What is the relationship? The pan defines how the cake is going to be. And one fundamental thing you should know here is that one class can be used to create several objects. So all you have to do is create um, what's it called a class, and out of that class, you can just keep churning out objects. And now taking it back to our game example, when I'm programming a game, all I have to do is define a person class. Or define a person class and say oh a person is going to have a hand a person a person is going to have two hands sorry a person is going to have two legs a person is going to have a head eyes a person can move a person can hear and then after defining the class i can then stop each time i need a new character i can just go to my class and say hey class give me a new person i need a new person and it just keeps giving me people to use in my game now these people are independent of each other. Their, their game lives can differ, but at the end of the day, they come from the same class. And that really is the distinction between classes and objects. So um, I hope that's clear. If it isn't, you can drop me a message. I'm usually busy nowadays, but I'll try to attend to them. So that said, let us um, look at some code. So, um, I have my terminal open here. I, I try to make it bigger, so hopefully um, you guys can see this clear enough. I'll just I'll make it a little bigger. So I will go to, I, I usually like to put my project in one directory, so I'll go to where I put my project. And then I'll just say as usual.net new. 
data projects, classes, and objects, .NET new console, and classes and objects, and we will use hit enter and that will create this project for me. Okay, created the project successfully. It's a story in the get packages. All right, that's good. So I'm going to say code. Um, I'm going to first go to the folder, cd, classes and objects, and then I'm going to say code and dot to open it in Visual Studio Code. Alright, we have it open in Visual Studio Code. Now I'm just going to open program.cs. I'll take out this because we don't need it right now. And so far, all the work we've been doing, right, we've been um, doing it in the same file. We've been only using one file, but it, what is, um, it becomes unmanageable. So for a very complex system or a very complex game, you really can just put all of your code inside of one file and this is the first time we're going to use a different file so we're going to create a class or we're going to create a number of classes now and what we're going to do first of all save this and um, i'll just come over here and remember to click out here so you don't put the class in any folder and then i'll click on new file so this is a new file icon i'll click on new file and i'll name it um what should i name this class let's let's name this class student let's see yes should we use this example okay let's call this class student let's see yes right and then I'm going to come here. I need some of these things in my student class. So I need the namespace. I'm just going to copy all of this because I need them to be in the same namespace. You don't have to um, understand what that means now, but as we continue, all will become clear. So namespace, classes, and objects. And how do you create a class? So first of all, I'm putting my class in a namespace, which is the same name with my project. And then the way to create a class is to use a class keyword. In fact, we've been working with a special type of class called the program class. So I'm just going to come back to come back here and then I'm going to say class student. Now remember, what are we doing here? I'm going to make this a public class. Remember what we're doing here. We're, we're, we're defining what a student is going to be like right when we actually create the student so what things should a student have so public string name a student should have a name okay set um public string of course, let's see. This is new job, so what you're studying. I don't know, we use courses in Nigeria, so let's see. We'll look at the course. Get. Set. Um, public string GPA or CGPA. Let's say we want to be able to know the. Every student has a CGPA. Get. Set. Um, what else do the students have? Public string level. So we're modeling this class after a university student, right? Or oh, um, I'm making mistakes here. So they should be because the CGPA should be a double because it's a decimal, and the level should be an integer. Because it can be either you're in 100 level or you're 200 level or you're 300 level. Or... Yes, yeah, so we have all of that. And we have our student class. Um, I'm wondering if there's any other thing I can add to our student class now. But let's keep it simple for now. And we have a student class. What we can then do is when we come to our code, we can create students. So the way to use our student class is to first of all, um let's create a new student i'll say val or i'll say i'll use the name of the class student 
S1 equals new student, right? So this creates a student object for me. S1 is a student, student is a class. This is the object and this is a class. So this class is our baking plan. It defines all the things the student should have. And I just created the student here. So I'm going to um, do something here. I'm going to say console dot right line f1 dot name. So I, I want to print the student's name, right? So I just created an object which is a an instance of the student class. It's like I just made the cake out of the baking pan. My student class is a baking pan. And this variable I have here, this S1 is an actual student and S1 has a name because all students should have a name according to our class definition. And then I'm trying to print out the name of the student here. So I'm going to just say, uh, hold on, I might try to, okay, that's too big. I hope you can see my terminal here. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to say dot net run and we, we can see that nothing is printed out. This has finished running and nothing was printed out. And the reason nothing was printed out is we've not given a name to the student. All we've done is we've created a student, but we've not named the student. And like I said, objects have properties, right? For example, I am an object, I have a voice, I have limbs, I have a name. So if someone wants to refer to me, imagine I was born and I was never named. That way, I, I, I don't have a name. So how do people refer to me? So because we've created an object, let's go ahead and say s1.name equals Vincent Warner. And I just created um I just created a student object and I gave that student object the name Vincent Warner. I'm going to create another one S2. I'll say student S2 equals new student, right? And I'm going to say S2 the name equals Richard Warner, right? So now I have two objects. They're coming from the same class, but they're independent entities, right? They're very different from, they're both students, but they can have their own properties separate of each other. So we see that from this one student class, we've made two students, right? And this is the kind of thing you're going to do when you actually start writing applications. Early on in my career, I wrote a school management system and I just had a student class, and every and my student class had your level, your course, or your scores for different courses, and it was just easy to manipulate um, objects like that. I can call a student object, check okay which student object has the highest CGPA or which of them, and display this result. So this time I'm going to write console dot write line s one dot name, and then console. But right line s2 dot name right and i and i have that too right I, I can now bring up my terminal again and see dot net run and this time i have two names i have two students vincent Mona and Richard Warner. Let's go ahead and fill in some, let's create some more students. Um, let's just give this a CGPA. So S1 dot CGPA, I'd say my CGPA is um, 3.5. And let's say my brother's CGPA, Richard is actually my brother, S2. Let's CGPA. Let's say his CGPA is uh, 4.9, right? And then I can come here and say 
if f1 dot c g cgp a is less if f1 dot cgp a is less than s2 dot cgp a I want to display S2 dot I want to display also console the right line S2 dot name Plus has a higher CGPA. I'm going to say has the highest CGPA. And we're just going to end this statement. So then the else. I'm just going to copy this and change a couple of things. Else s one dot name. So what I'm doing here really is I'm checking. Okay, is Vincent's CGPA higher than Richard CGPA? Is lower than is it lower than Richard CGPA? If my CGPA is lower than Richard CGPA, then I want to just print that Richard has the highest CGPA. If not, I'm going to print that I have the highest CGPA. Let's just run this and see. Once again, dot net run. And we first have the names printed, and it says Richard Warner has high CGPA. And these are some examples of what you can do with um, objects. They're, they're really powerful. Um, they're really powerful structures, right? Great. Let's look at some other things. So let's look at other kinds of objects. Let's say you're writing, right now we're using people, but let's say you're writing a math application, for example, and you need to talk about shapes. How do you deal with that? Let's say you need shapes in your application for whatever reason, and you need shapes need to have a direction or any of that, right? I'm just going to take out everything I've written so far. I'm going to leave our student class. So I'm going to come here and create a different class. I'm going to create a new file and see this class is going to be a rectangle. Rectangle.cs. So remember our namespace. Namespace classes and objects. Then I'll say public class. Rectangle. So there we have our class. And what sensors a rectangle have? A rectangle has a height and a width. So the public toggle height get and set public double width. Get set. So I have a height and width. What other properties does a rectangle have? Um, color. So I'm going to say public string. Let's say the color is a string for now. Color. Get set. Let's see which other property does a rectangle have. Okay, so um, that's it. We have okay. Let's put the position of our rectangle. You see, public x position get set. Let's see, public double x position. So the x position of this rectangle, and then lastly, public. Double Y position get set. Okay, so we have the um, we have a rectangle here. We have the height, we have the width, we have the color, 
and all of that so we have a rectangle class now let us create some rectangles out of this class right i'm going to come back to my program and i'll say rectangle first rectangle equal new rectangle now i want you to think of this first rectangle that we created the other variable it's just like saying var string equals hello world now this in the same way that string i'm um, sorry let's say string new string equals hello world the same way we think of new string as a variable of type string that is exactly the same way first rectangle is a variable of type rectangle right so we just created our first rectangle let's give our rectangle some properties so i, to me, I, I think i'm just going to make this shorter so it's easy to type I'll call it R1. So we come down here and we say R1. R1 the height equals it's 100 um, centimeters high. R1 the width, let's say it's 100. Um, R1. R1 dot Y position. Equal, let's say it's um at zero. I want that y position. Let's say it's at zero too. So let's say it's at the very edge of our axis. So if we had a um, let's see, let's see if I can find an image of a graph. Then I couldn't draw a graph for a second there. So. Uh, So this is a graph, right? And this is a this is a zero position. So this is zero on the x-axis, and this is zero on the y-axis. Y-axis. So if we have a rectangle at position zero zero, it's going to be right here in the middle. So zero zero, right? So that's it. So we have our one's position is zero. Um, its x position is zero, and its y position is zero. It means that if this was our screen, x our rectangle would be right here. So that's this with this rectangle. Let's create a different rectangle. Rectangle R2. I feel like saying R2D2 here. Oh, I said it. Rectangle R2 equals new rectangle. Um, so I have R2 the height equals 100. Um, R2 the width. Well, let's say the weight for this one is 200 and then I want when the text position equals let's say this one's position is at say 5 and I2 dot y position let's say it's 10 um, what else is in our class we have the color sorry uh, and that's it is rectangle is red I want that color equals red and R2 with color equal black because I really like black so I have to use black here and now we have two rectangles by the way let us look at where this rectangle would be on the screen so it's a 5 on the X and 10 on the Y and so that would be so um, somewhere here um hold on so five on the x so five on the x and ten on the y so this rectangle this second rectangle would be somewhere around here it's higher probably higher so we just have it here so we have our first rectangle here because of the text and y and we have a different rectangle here and if this were game objects if this were actually people we would see on our screen we'll see one person here and then we'll see another person up here it's like when you're playing tetris the the popular block game so let's let's look at tetris tetris is i, I think tetris is the perfect example don't know why I didn't think of it earlier. Um, so this is Tetris and this is a rectangle. 
this is a rectangle it has a height it has a width and it has a position because right now it's here and then what we do in our program when it comes down is we keep checking its position these ones have positions too and we keep checking its positions for when it hits home for when it whenever it hits the base here we stop we stop it so its lifetime has ended and if it completes any of these rules they go away and once its x and y position matches the x and y position for the things down here we know that it has reached the end so we can bring out a new rectangle so that really is how it works so this is the x and y position for this rectangle so um, what, what are the kind of things we might want to do with our rectangle the first one is we might want to check if it has hit um if it's x and y coordinate has reached if it is moving right if it's x and y coordinate is changing what we want to do here is we want to create something called a method so far we've been writing all of our code in mean mean is something called a method but it's a very special method the first time your project runs or your program runs it's going to look for the main method right and it is going to execute the main method this is a main method so everything from here to here is known as a code block and this code block is called the main method the same way that we're creating a rectangle and we're naming it r1 in that very same way we're creating a method and naming it main and this method contains all of these things now the good news is that we can create other methods right it doesn't have to be one method all of our code does not have to be in main as a matter of fact we create methods to do very specialized things like we create a method to do a simple job and it returns a value for us so follow me i'm going to create a method now i'm going to say static bool is shape shape square open and close the brackets i'm going to write rectangle r and then i'm going to come down here i'm going to explain everything i'm doing here just stay with me now i'm going to say if r dot width is equals r the height return to else return false. Now, if you're wondering what I typed here, it's just a double um equals. So, and because I'm using a, a font, when I type two equals, so with no space between them, it changes it to the double equal symbol. Now, let me explain what is going on here. So, first of all, I told you we're going to create a different method. So, if you notice, this is a method because we have a code block here. Our method has a name. And one important thing to know is that methods reside in classes. So, this is a code block for this class and then this is a code block for this method and this method is within the program class good so it's shape square right we're checking if the shape is square so what this method is supposed to do is it is supposed to check if a method if a, if a rectangle is a square and how do you know that a rectangle is a square you know that a rectangle is a square if the width and the height are the same so let's look at let's look for a square. So here we have a square. Um the the thing about a square is that the width the width is always equal to the height. So if we define a rectangle here and our width is the same as our height then that rectangle is a square and maybe for some reason we need to keep track of which rectangles are squares and which ones are not squares in our program what we would do is we would write a method is shape square and we what we're doing here is when we create a method a method has some necessary things first of all because that method is going to do work we need to tell our program what kind of value is this method going to return at the end of the day so after doing all this work 
what value is this method going to return to whoever asked it to do work? Right, because our method cannot just function on its own. Someone has to call our method and instruct our method to do something. Someone has to invoke our method and pass some value to the method and say, hey, method, go and do this calculation and come back with a result for me. But first, we need to tell the record what kind of result to bring back. I mean, someone can just call me and say, hey, Vincent, I want a website. Here's some money. Go make me a website. The person needs to tell me what kind of website they want. So we need to tell um, our method what kind of value it's going to return. And that is what we do on this line. On this line, we're telling our method that, hey, you're going to return a Boolean, which is a true or false. So whatever this method do, does, at the end of the day, we're going to return a result that is either a true or a false. And that makes sense because if we want to check if a square, if a shape is square, if we ask someone, hey, is this shape square? What they say is either yes, it is square or no, it is not a square. So this is our, this um, tells us that our method is going to return a boolean value, a true or false. And now let's look at our main method for a minute. Our main method is returning a void. Now what does void mean? Void means, hey, this method is going to do some work, but it is not going to return anything. It is just going to exit. And as the entry point of our application, that makes sense. When we open our application, everything in our main code runs. And when it's done running, it just exits and our program um, closes. We're not returning anything to anyone. So when your method does not return anything, we use the void keyword. Good. So in this case, we're returning a bool, which is a true or false, which makes sense. And then what is this here? This is we're telling whoever is going to call our method that, look, if you want me to check that if a shape is a square, you have to give me the shape to check. I, I kind of manufacture a shape out of thin air and check if this shape is a square or not. So what we're doing here is we're saying, oh, when you call a shape square, pass in a rectangle, which I am actually going to check. And that is what this line here does, this bit of code here. It says, hey, I'm expecting you to give me a rectangle when you call me. I hope that is clear. Now we're just going to come into the method. And what I'm doing here is if r dot width equals to r dot height. So I'm simply comparing if the rectangle that is passed in width is equal to the height, then we know we have a rectangle and then we return to now a return statement is used to return a value from a method. So immediately our code hits this condition and evaluates this condition and it says, oh, okay, yes, they're actually the same. It returns true. So it tells anybody that called it that, oh, yes, it's the, they actually are, this, this shape you passed me is a square. And then if this fails, it comes to this next statement and else it says false or oh, the height and the weight are not the same. So I'm sorry, this is not a rectangle, right? And that's the basics of, um, that's really the basics of methods. You can create various kinds of methods to do a lot of things, right? There are a lot of um, methods available from Sasha. For example, I can, um, let's just do something very quickly here. I can see, um console right line maths dot maths dot square root sixteen let's break this down a bit more um so I'll see double SQL equals I'm creating a variable named and I'm, I'm creating a variable and I'm naming it SQL and I'm setting the value to max just square root 16 and then I'm going to just console the right line um, the value in SQL right and let's just run this as usual so the net long it's going to point out every other okay so we have a four here so sql was four let's see what's going on here exactly so what we're doing here is 
they said hey give me the square root of 16 and we all know the square root of 16 is 4 and i just printed it out and how did i do that there's a class in this in, in .NET, which .NET provides to you by default called the maths class right? let's see if we can go to it let's go to the definition of this class and this is a maths class and it has a lot of properties just like the class we created so when you're creating classes it's not magic right the entire .NET is actually a collection of classes that have different um, abilities for example today we have created a method that checks if a shape is a square we can take this method and give it to someone else to use to check if a method is a square in their own program in the same way the engineers at microsoft have created this mass class that has a lot of important methods that we use in our day-to-day -day work so for example i need to check the square root of a number and all i have to do let's see go to fsqit all i have to do is to call this method this method takes a double or an integer um takes a double and an integer and then it returns the square root of the number and that is all i'm doing here i am calling the method i am using the method here and that really is what methods are they allow us to do a uh, they allow us to carry out some operations on objects or on other types so that's what we're doing here i just want to let you know that this is not magic we have a class called the math class and we have a method in that math class called the square root which helps us check now let us go ahead and use our own methods that we created here I should take this away for a bit so now we want to check um so i'm going to say bool is is r1 square equals bool is r1 square equals is shape square now i want to use my method and then i'm going to pass in r1 and then I'm going to say bool is r2 square. I'm going to say is r2 square r2. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking. I'm sorry, this is wrong. It's shape square r2 so i have this first variable to check if r1 is square and i have the second variable to check if r2 is square and then i'm just going to write both of them console the right line so one square console dot right line is a two square great so let's run this so let's see what we're doing here i created a method to check if a variable if a rectangle is a square or not and then how am i checking if it's a square i'm checking if the width and the height are the same then yes it's a square and just look at this you can answer before we run the code you probably should get your answer already i'm just going to clear my console and go dot net run And so for the first one i have two and the second one i have false let's see let's see for correct so for the first one yes height and width are the same so yes um let's see so yes the first one is true the second one height and width are different so we expected false because i'm enjoying this let us go ahead and create another method and this method will check if we have two um shapes in the same position and this is the kind of method you would want to write if you want to check if a bullet has hit a person because then the bullet would be in the same position with the person now um let's go ahead and do this so we have um static bull because we want to check if they are in the same position so we're going to return a true or false to is in same position and this time because we're checking two rectangles we, we're actually checking if two rectangles are in the same position so we have to accept two rectangles so i'm going to say 
rectangle I one and rectangle I two. So I'm taking into the rectangle and I need to make confirm if they're in the same position. So the way to do that is I'm going to say um there, there are a lot of ways to do that, but I'm just going to really keep this simple and I'm going to check if they are on the same point exactly. So I'm going to say if I one dot exposition equals R2 dot exposition. So first of all, I'm checking if the expositions are the same. Then and so I'm extending my check now. I one dot y position equals I two dot y position. Now I'm checking that the y positions are the same. So if this is two, then I know that it's in position. I'm going to return two else I'm going to return false so this simply checks if they're in the same position and I, I can come here and say who is is in same position equals now using my method is in the same position I, I can pass in both my rectangles now r1 and r2 so here we see it, an example of a method that can take two um so we call this arguments i can take two arguments so we're passing both r1 and r2 to it and we're trying to find out if they're in the same position and let's just print that value console the right line is in the same position I'm going to comment this out so we can run the other code. Um, and then not clear and then dot net run. And there we have it false, they're not in the same position, right? The reason they're not in the same position is because their x and y coordinates differ. Um well, really, right? When I what I said is programs are composed of objects, and I see one way to make this easier. Instead of having an L R one dot X position and an R two dot Y position, let's take this a little bit deeper. Let us create an object or a new class. Let's create a class and call this class position. Okay, remember it has to end with a dot CS position.cs and then I'm going to say as usual my namespace class is an object and then I'm going to say public class position right so I've created a position class I know every position has an x and y value so I'm going to say public double x Get set and then public double y get set. So I have a position class now. Instead of having let's let's come to my rectangle. Instead of having these two properties on my rectangle of a y position and an x position, and really, if we decide that oh, it's important to know the altitude, we we'll have to go public double out can spell altitude get set and if tomorrow we decide that we'll, to know the accuracy of the x and y position is important we have to come here and add another public double accuracy get set which starts to become a little a bit um bloating the way to write programs is to look at your common properties and think, hmm, which of these properties can I put together into the same object, right? And we can, instead of all of this, we can come here and say public position position okay, set. So just as we're using our string as a variable here, we're using a double we can use our position class that we created as a variable too and instead of having x and y and altitude and accuracy we can simply take all of this i'll take this and move it into my position class 
and I just close this. And suddenly so our, our class is more structured. So I just have a height, width, color, and position variable. Now, how do I how do we do this? If we come here, um, I expect that we're going to have some errors here because now if we try to run this code, let's go to point one, we should have some issues. So we have a lot of issues now, as expected, because I1 no longer has an X position and a Y position, right? And neither does R2. So I'm going to take this here, see, we don't have the red lines. I'm going to take this out. Let's give this a color. It's not fair for the first one to have a color. So R2 dot color, because we have a color. I remember assigning black to it. Now we have red lines all over here too. So how do we um, assign this position now? Because we've changed the way we're creating the position. So what we're going to do is we're going to say r one dot position equals new position. And then we can see r one dot position dot x r one dot position dot x equals one hundred and r one dot position dot y equals one hundred. Mm, let's make it zero zero. So we have this. And then same for here, we can come and say i2 dot position equals new position. If you don't create the position, because remember this is a class, we need to create the position object. And then we can now come say i2 dot position dot x equals five and i2 dot position dot y equals 10 and suddenly we have to change our logic here it's in the same position all we have to do now is see mm, i think we just have to prefix this with position position equals x We just make certain adjustments to this one. Let's cut this and bring it here instead. And cut this and make it here instead. So suddenly our code works again. But what's different now is that we've created a class for our position and we have a dedicated class for position. And if we decide or oh, we need more values in here, we can always put them in here. And then the rectangle has a height, a width, a color, and a position. Now, double is actually a class to in .NET. So don't this is not magic, right? We're simply doing what Microsoft engineers have done to here. So they have a string which has certain properties. For example, we can come here and say let's create a string string my name equals Vincent one so string um, this is my string is a variable and I cannot say my name dot and when I say my name dot I see all the methods that are available to me these are all the methods that are available to me on the string type on the string class all of these are defined in the string class and let us go look at the string class and this is a string class it's a lot to look at well let's just go down and you see it has a lot of methods for example it has n suite which takes a string value and it just returns what the strings end with and we have an equals which checks if two strings are equal um we have a lot of values here we have an index of which checks the position of a particular character in a string and at the end of this day, it's the same thing we're doing here. 
we're creating a class and we're adding methods to um that class so um that really is where we would stop for today we, we can run this code again so i'll first of all clear this and i'll go dot net run and it's false of course because it still works i'll check still works and it will have false and those really are the basics of classes and types um classes and objects right so i hope you're following up um this video is getting long it's over almost 15 minutes or more so i'm just going to stop it here now and remember to get back to me if you have any questions or needs for clarification thank you